Not too long ago, we made a fancy animated YouTube subscribe button in Fusion. Now we're gonna take that and literally take it up a notch. <laughs> it's going to jump. We're gonna give it a little fancy jump in animation. Let's do it. Okay, so I'm gonna start at this point because we built this in a previous video. If you wanna to link to that, click right here and you can kind of do the first part of the video. The second part, we're gonna add even more fanciness to this button, have it jump around and, you know, pack things up and in and pack the wind and, and things like that. <laughs> you know that song, the jump around song. Jump around. It's gonna do that. So the main thing we're gonna look at here is the actual animation. So we have this kind of squishing down, but I thought it would be fun to have this squish down and then pop back up so quickly that it kind of lifts off the ground. So a couple things we need to do to sort of get ready for that. One is mess with our nodes a little bit. Right now we have the top of the button in kind of its own group. It runs through its own transform. And so we can take this and move it around separate from the bottom. And so this isn't actually a 3D button. It's just two 2D layers on top of each other. Kind of a fancy trick. But what we should do is take all of that and make it its own thing and merge that over the background so that we can move the button as a whole as well. So, so we can do this with a fancy trick. Let's take this merge and just get rid of it. And we'll take our white background down here. We'll plug this brightness and contrast right into the background of the merge. And now we have this whole button sort of isolated. We go down here to our media out. We'll just unhook this, merge it over our white background like that. And we have the same result, but the difference is that all of this comes into its own merge, everything that's above the white background. And so we can turn everything off. We can also do something Something like add a transform and move it all around as one group that's a nice way to do that so let's just call this um button master xf for transform and let's just kind of preview what we're going to be doing here right as this pops up at frame 12 we're going to have this button start to lift up off the ground so let's keyframe our center and also our angle and then we'll just come down here a few frames and bring this up like this so now as it squishes, it kind of comes up like that. And then we don't want it to stay up. We want it to go back down. And so let's bring this back to 0.5. So the timing isn't going to be right, but the basic motion is sort of there. Okay. So we have it squishing and then jumping up, reaching its peak and coming back down. So this looks super weird because it isn't eased. And so we can go over to the spline panel and here, let's just hit control A to select all of these points and hit F on the keyboard. By the way, if your spline panel has a bunch of stuff here, it's because in the three dots, you don't have show only selected tool on. That's how I like to use it for obvious reasons. <laughs> uh, so much better like this. So yeah, do that. So now we have this squish in. See, and it kind of works. It's like it's getting ready to jump and then it jumps. I like that. If you're new to Fusion, sometimes it can be really overwhelming all of the nodes that you need to uh, try and learn and figure out how to use. But there's really only nine nodes that I use all the time. And I have a free workshop, the nine nodes that you need to make almost anything in Fusion. You can click this link or the link in the description down below and check it out for free. It's my gift to you. Now, the timing isn't quite right. If we want to adjust timing, the keyframes panel is a little better for that. And so I'll select this transform, twirl this down, and let's just kind of move these keyframes around and play this back. Yeah, see, that's working a little better. I think even having it pop up a little faster and then, yeah, fall down slower works. I'll hold control and select the actual squish animation. We might actually want this to happen a little earlier. Let's just see what happens if we follow through that animation. That works pretty well. I can hit this zoom to rectangle thing and just draw a rectangle around all of the points that I want to look at. I can hold middle button on my mouse to adjust the keyframes here. We can just kind of play this back and it just takes a little messing around to get to where this feels natural. In fact, we might even bring up the spline panel for this button animation and let's not have this slow down at the top. We can just click this button, this little line to turn this back to linear because we do probably want this linear at the top. And it takes a minute to kind of get this animation right, but we want this to kind of spring up like that at the top and to fall down. Yeah. Okay. That's looking pretty good. Let's also have this rotate a little bit. Start with our angle here at 18. And then as it gets to the top, we'll have it rotate just a touch, something like that. And then as it falls back down, we'll have it go back to zero. And again, in the spline, let's flatten out all of our tangents here. Make sure we have nice smooth curves. I'm just selecting each of these and hitting F on the keyboard to flatten those out. Now we have this little bounce. Cool. In fact, I might even take one of these handles and drag it out and hold Alt as I drag it out. Just have this kind of slow down at the top a little bit. Same thing for our displacement here. Drag that out. So now it's a little springy, kind of hangs out at the top for a little bit. Nice and cartoony. Boing. Yes, I love that. Okay, that's looking a little better. So one thing that's gonna sell this is a shadow, which we can actually make pretty easily. Let's just take this white background over here because it's just easier. And let's make a shadow color. So let's just take a black background here and I'll merge this over. 
And let's take this same mask that we've used forever, plug that into our black background. And again, we can just use another transform here, change where this happens. And we'll just put this right about at the bottom and we'll blur it too. Let's take this and just add a blur. So now we just have this little bit blurry mask and we can take the blend down here a little bit. We'll just push that up to where it's just barely there. Hit two on the keyboard for our media out. Maybe we'll blur it just a little more. Turn this blend up a little bit just so we have a little bit of darkness there. And then right as this lifts off the ground right there, so frame 18, we can animate all of these things. So we can animate the blur size right as it goes to the top all the way back down to the bottom. At the bottom, it's going to be the same. So we'll just make another keyframe there. But right there, frame like 22, you can check that by going to the keyframes, seeing where that is. Just select both of these frame 23. Take this blur and we'll just push this up a little more when it's farther up. Yes that. So now we have a blurry shadow at the top and then a sharp shadow at the bottom. It works. Boing. And that just really sells it. Take this transform and we can adjust the transform as well. Let's just have the same timing as our blur. And we'll just adjust the center and the angle. Same here. Center and the angle. Then here in the middle. Maybe we'll bring this up a little bit and we'll rotate it a little bit. Yeah, something like that. Mm, I don't know if I like that very much. Take this down like this. Maybe we won't do the angle. Let's just reset those. I think it's better without them. Select all those keyframes for our blur and hit F to flatten them. Okay, see how we're doing. That looks really cool. Now it kind of bounces itself. It's leaping, leaping for joy, just like you and me, because we made something cool. One thing I want to do is maybe add a little motion blur. We can do that here right in our transform. Just go into settings and turn on motion blur like that. Now let's see how it rides. Yeah, a little nicer. Now it's a little pop. That's cute, right? Easy to do, just a matter of putting everything we want to animate in its own merge and animating this transform, doing a little bit of fancy keyframe curves in the spline panel, adjusting the timing a little bit, and of course adding that little shadow here that just really makes a big difference. Cool. So here's our result. Have that nice little boing. Such a cool little animation. Gosh, this is so much fun. I love making stuff like this. Hey, if you don't know me, my name's Casey and I help people make amazing things in Fusion. Visual effects, motion graphics, that kind of thing. And uh, if you want to hang out with me more, you can check out this video and make sure not to miss that nine nodes workshop. That's totally free. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a good time. Helps you learn Fusion. Okay? Okay, right there. Or there, depending on what you want. <laughs>